Does this face explain it all? It's time to start. Gravity's rainbow. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. This is how much I don't want to do it. I have the audiobook to hopefully, hopefully help me power through. I have my pencil. Wish me luck. We are 47 pages into Gravity's Rainbow, and I don't hate it, but it's like a whiplash book because there are these moments where the writing is really, really good and beautiful and is saying a lot about what it's like to be in wartime England, World War II, just the fear, the claustrophobia, the um, complete disruption of normal life. And then it's just like dick jokes and objectifying women. And so I just keep going back and forth and back and forth between these two states of just like, or three states, I think, like being impressed with the prose, laughing heartily at dick jokes, being disgusted by the misogyny. And I feel like that's just going to be the way all 700 and something pages of this goes. That's as far as we are. I need a break. Hello. <laughs> more, <laughs> more pension. Um, I have been reading this in the mornings because I, though this is not how I want to start my day, I feel like I can only really do this at the start of my day as I'm caffeinating because this is a lot. We are, we are here. It's like 120 pages. I would like to get to here today so that I can get to part two. First of all, I went through and I dog-eared, everyone have a conniption over me dog-earing, every new section, chapter, I don't know what these are. I don't know what you want to call these. These parts, are they chapters? Are they books? I don't know. But anyway, the fourth book is just called The Counterforce. And the quote in it is just, what? Richard Nixon. What the fuck is that? So this is crazy. I am trying to figure out if this is supposed to be like satirical commentary on racism in America and like all the problematic things that are in America um, that are built into our history because there's like tons of racial slurs, tons of like racial commentary, or if Pinchon's just, if he's just racist. I, I, I cannot, I cannot tell because uh, it's, this is so strange. We have a villain who is a German captain and he, we get introduced to him because he's like, basically in a very cliched cabaret style like drag kind of situation but he's also like a sexual predator and like being tr possibly trans or at least dressing in drag for part is part of his characteristics and is seemingly used to make him evil so like i'm not okay with that but it's also 1973 so maybe I should just expect that. Um, when we meet this captain, that scene, that BDS scene is just unnecessary. Unnecessary. It's unnecessary. So much of this book is unnecessary. So much of this book is just dicks. But okay, I stopped at 120 because my brain hurts because our man's Slothrop, who's our main character, he's a psychopath who is being manipulated by the white visitation who is like a psychological war secret agency that messes with his brain because they figured out that he somehow can basically sense when a bomb's going to be dropped because they have new bombs now the germans that don't make sounds like and stuff like the doodle bugs they're harder to predict but you know what can predict them slothrop's penis he is a magical bomb seeking penis so he gets aroused, has some times with the ladies, and then a bomb drops. And we just stopped with a bomb dropping. And the lady he's with being like, that's weird that he's aroused. But we're having sex, so it's cool. Literally, she says, what they're effing now? What does it matter? For God's sake, why shouldn't this blitz be good for something? Meanwhile, the secret agency is literally watching them. Because they're studying him. Because they want to figure out how to use him as a tool. I, this is so weird so weird. I am very, I, 
I don't think I've ever written in a book so much, like so many questions to myself and like, what is this? And I'm glad I'm reading this with someone else because I have so many questions. Ultimately, what is the point of this whole thing? Is this commentary on war? I, it's just, uh, I do not believe that anybody reads this for fun. I, I just do not believe it. Nobody is like, you know what my favorite book is and means this seriously. You, you, can't, you can't possibly mean that seriously. Also, every woman in here is literally just something to have sex with. Anyway, I'm going to read something else for a bit because my brain hurts. I haven't done an update on Gravity's Rainbow in several days. I have been reading it. I'm still not halfway through this. I think we're at like 47% of the audio. I'm here. I'm, I'm coming in on the halfway point. I'm in part three. It's four parts. And part three is so long. And I, I still don't know what this book is. We're getting more long passages of really much more like deep, introspective, meaningful, you know, literary work, text, etc. And then there's like a custard fight from a hot air balloon. And this book weaves so much absurdity into it and the density of limericks at times. The density of limericks. Like a limerick here or there. Cool. Um, I don't need like limerick after limerick after limerick after friggin' limerick and then thrown in a song and then another limerick. It's too much. So far, I don't hate it. I'm not understanding why people that have allegedly read this are like, it changed my life. This book was life changing. This book was whatever. I'm not getting it. Now, I guess the ending is supposed to be spectacular. We'll see. And apparently this is supposed to be like one of the best intros to a book ever. Is it? I don't know. I mean, a screaming comes across the sky. It has happened before, but there is nothing to compare it to now. Is that? I feel like there's better intros. Um, like first lines of a book, but I guess it's memorable. I mean, last night I dreamt I went to Manderley again, I think is more memorable, but that's just me. Yeah, so that's my update right now, is that I am in the same place I was, I think, in the last update, that this book just oscillates between the intellectual and the absurd, and my brain hurts, and I am glad that I'm reading this with other people, so that I have someone to talk to while I'm doing this, otherwise I think I would go insane. I just wish this book would move more. It is not just long, it is densely long. It is densely long. Even with the absurd bits, it is it is a long boy. I Depending on typeface, this could be over a thousand pages. This guy is not short in any way, shape, or form. It is not succinct, it is not short. But I, I, I think I'm glad I'm doing this. I think. The payoff for this better be. This ending better not suck, is all I have to say. Hello. So I have restarted this for today. Uh, it is later in the day than normal. I'm way more awake than normal while reading this. And I wish I was not. What the fuck is happening on this riverboat? I can't even say. I can't even say what it is. But it would make the most avid smut reader vomit. I am not okay with the goings on on this riverboat, sea boat, whatever boat this is that they're on. <clears throat> when does Slothrop become Humbert? <clears throat> Moving on. This, is this book ever gonna end? I made it to part four. We have made it to part four of Gravity's Rainbow. And I actually laughed out loud. This book is gonna be one hell of a book to try to summarize for you guys, because this experience is something else.
entirely. He's like, I think I've missed like 90% of the things that have happened in this book. And the other 10% of things that I've caught are just crazy or like really beautifully said. Like he goes on these, oh, I got so much makeup on my book. Who cares? Um, He goes on these like long sections of almost stream of consciousness where he's talking about the war or like an aspect of the war or humanity or something like that. And it's amazing. I love it. Like I, I am so into it. There's, it's like the most coherent sections of the story. It's the most accessible and I'm just sold. And if you edited it down to those moments with maybe a, a few of the more frivolous lowbrow jokes and just just to keep it you know balanced this book could be phenomenal in a much more accessible way and instead it's it it's this so because after that after you do those things you go on these beautiful long passages that i'm in love with and then you just do something ridiculous like remove someone's testicles and not in like a grimdark fun way, just like ridiculous. Or there's like a talking pig or like an octopus is, you're trying to arouse an octopus. I don't know. It's there. This book is weird. It is weird and I don't hate it, but I also don't like it. And I'm very confused like 90% of the time. But we have one part left to go. It's like a hundred and something pages. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. And then somehow I have to sum up this entire experience. Yes, Mercy. If you heard Mercy go, mm, that's how that's how mommy feels too. Ugh, I need to go do something else with my brain. Oh, sorry, Mercy. Did not need to drop that on her. Mercy? I don't know what the book I just read. It's done. And I'll have to figure out a wrap up for this vlog because I don't know. <laughs> I also don't know how to read this. Well, we circled back to the bananas, so at least there's some continuity in the story. Is that a fair, like, review? But I finished it. I finished the book that most people never finished. And she's not proud of me at all. I'm proud of me. She's been here for moral support. Through most of it. So. Alright, I will come back with some sort of wrap up -y, smart person-ish review of Gravity's Rainbow. But I really did finish it. This is the video clip I've been dreading to film because I finally have to summarize my thoughts on Gravity's Rainbow. I honestly wish that I just straight up hated this or I was like a lot of the other people that have videos out there that are like, this book changed my life. Because uh, I feel like that summary would be it's so much easier to to create for you all. But since I sort of sit in this weird middle area where I don't even know how I feel after reading this other than like somebody put an ice pick in my brain and went like this really hard and jammed up all my brains. A lobotomy. I feel like I've been lobotomized after reading this and now I can't read any other books the same way. I mean, I guess the people who say that it's changed their lives are not wrong. It has changed my life. I literally cannot see books in the same way. I feel like it has colored the way that I read other books, which is weird. And I don't know if it's good or bad. Yeah. I'm grateful that it's over. <laughs> and I'm grateful that I read it. I think that 
if you can get through the first like 100 pages of this, it's worth finishing. Not just to say that you finished it, but just to see some of the really brilliant moments in here. There are some lovely, poignant, especially the stream of consciousness moments where he is really talking about World War II and or America in World War II or science in World War II or things like that that are just really well done and the messaging about how like nobody's hands are clean when it comes to war or how the the progress that you get from science and scientific discoveries a lot of it that you're enjoying in your household comes out of the war machine um messages like just talking about psychology on the whole or uh, racism in America. There's a lot in it, but there's so much other stuff, just like I'm putting this down, other stuff, limericks, dick jokes, fart jokes, uh, drug use, so many trigger warnings for this book, uh, just general misogyny, that it's sometimes hard to get through all those weeds and see the little gems that are actually in there. So I don't know, as a woman reader, I think a lot of the people that read this book and at least post about it online are all sort of like white dudes. And I think as like a white dude, you probably have a very different relationship to this than any other group of people who are reading it because the language is very difficult. There's, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out if how hard he goes on like the racist and stuff and the slurs and all of that is supposed to be a commentary on America and how racist we are or if Pinchan actually feels this way because there are stretches where the number of racial slurs that get used is mind-boggling and it's very difficult for me to read. The fact that a lot of the women in this story are literally only there to be objects of to, to have sex with is weird to me. Um, it gave me moments where I felt like I was reading Stranger in a Strange Land again where, forget it, the women are all like Benny Hill, Austin Powers, sex bot robots. So like I, it's a really tough book for me to summarize or collect my thoughts on because there's just too many thoughts and they're all kind of warring with each other. And I don't know if that's like the point of postmodern postmodernism is for me to just be confused or if there's a greater message going on here. I don't know. I will tell you that I made AI generate a review for us just so there was something to go on because my review on Storygraph is rockets go boom, dicks go spew, and that is Gravity's Rainbow because it's essentially this book in not quite a limerick, but maybe closer to a haiku. Anyway, it's not one of those either. So I'm going to read to you my AI generated review of Gravity's Rainbow so that there's something coherent here at the end of this video. Thomas Pynchon is an American author who is best known for his complex, bizarre work of fiction. True. His most famous work is the novel Gravity's Rainbow, which is narrated by a character named B.S. Clark. That's, is that true? Anyway, uh, the novel takes place in the post-World War II era and focuses on an international group of characters connected to various wars. The book is extremely long and includes many detailed descriptions of various places and things within the book. By presenting a multitude of ideas within a complex and intriguing narrative, Pinchan has proven himself to be an excellent author. Thank God AI is here for me to have a review for you guys. <laughs> Pinchan uses post-World War II era America to create a complex and bizarre world. He uses the era's pop culture to develop his characters and add depth to the novel's narrative. For example, he uses jazz music, burlesque shows, pinup girls, and other familiar objects to create a surreal world. He also uses the era's political events and leaders to add depth to his characters. For example, he gives Fritz Lang character development through his representation of Nazi ide ideology and actions. By having characters represent different ideas, Pinchin creates a complex yet accessible worldview. The book focuses on many war-related themes and ideas. One major theme is the destructive nature of war. Several chapters focus on describing the damage caused by warfare. For example, several chapters focus on describing damage caused by bombs dropped during World War II. Other major war-related themes include 
uh, retribution, the role of religion in war, fearlessness, and patriotism. Other war-related ideas include madness, heroism, death, insanity, and insanity at war's hands. Throughout the novel, Pinchan juxtaposes these various aspects of war with comical and yet poignant interactions between his characters. Pinchan creates a unique and challenging style that some critics have compared to postmodernism. In essence, postmodernism is a literary movement that rejects modernism's objective truth in favor of subjectivity or multiple interpretations of reality. However, some have argued that Pinchan's unique style makes his characters more real than modernists, modernist ones who adhere more strictly to their author's intentions. Unlike many other authors who write in specific genres, such as crime or romance, Pinchan writes in multi-genres at once and leaves it up to his readers to determine his character's gender and physicality based on their interactions with them rather than any stated characteristics or backstories they may have access to. Though Gravity's Rainbow is less popular than some of Pinchan's other works, it is still widely regarded as one of the greatest novels ever written. The book is extremely long, and includes many detailed descriptions of various places and things within the book. By presenting a myriad of ideas within a complex and intriguing narrative, Pinchin has proven himself to be an excellent author. Thank you, AI, for your bare bones book review of Gravity's Rainbow. I will say that I think the point of the destruction of war is very interesting, considering the way that Slothrop is used to find these rockets or suss out these rockets is very interesting. I'd love to have a discussion about the ending of this book because I I was constantly told that like the ending of this book is amazing and like that's why you read it and I was incredibly confused at the end like not to spoil anything because I don't even know if this is true or not. Did did was there just like mutual destruction going on? Is this the fear of the Cold War? Did everybody nuke each other and we're all gone. Did we get to the end of the book? But like somehow everybody's happy. Like you could tell me almost anything, any interpretation of the ending of this book, and I probably see it. And I think that's kind of my issue with finding a or settling on a final feeling for this story, for this book, for this novel, is that there's too much room for interpretation. So I don't know how I feel because I think anybody can read this and tell me something and I would believe it because there's too much in this story <laughs> to even have a firm grasp on what it is. A lot of other reviewers have talked about how, you know, you have to read this multiple times. How does one pick this up and read this again? I will be very surprised if at some point in however much longer I have on this planet, I pick this book up and read it again. I, I don't know how you read it multiple times. I guess the point is, I read it. It wasn't bad. I'm glad I read it. I don't hate Pinchan. I just wish that it, I would love an abridged version with all the nonsense taken out and just the really good commentary on politics, war, science, America, all of that left in. It would be a much shorter book. I think it would have a lot more impact overall. And it would have far fewer bananas. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys in my next video, whatever it may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. Bye.